All right, so in our fourth and uh, last topic, uh, I'm going to talk about forming a cartel and the collusion. Um, and I'm going to sort of discuss all that through an example, which is uh, pretty similar to the one we already solved in the Cruneau case, with one difference is that the costs are zero for simplicity. Um, so the inverse demand curve is 100 minus 16 times total quantity. There are two firms, and each firm has a zero fixed cost, zero marginal cost. So, <clears throat> and these two firms, imagine, are competing in a Cruneau fashion, and um, they have an incentive to uh, form a cartel, act like a monopolist. Um, so this is what I'm going to show. And then I will also show that the forming, I mean, the, although they have an incentive to form a cartel, it may not be sustainable because they also have incentive to cheat. Um, and so there are two forces going in opposite directions. Like they have incentive to um, uh, uh, collude, but they also have incentive to um, uh, cheat and deviate from collusion. All right, so this is all I'm going to explain through this simple example. Well, first thing first, though, what would happen if these two firms compete in a Cruneau fashion? So let's solve this. Although I solved a similar example, but we had a marginal cost there, a positive marginal cost. Here, the marginal cost is zero. Therefore, the, uh, the optimal quantities and prices will be different. But it's a very simple solution uh, for the Cruneau. The profit, say, for firm one is <clears throat> price minus, uh, I'm sorry, price times uh, quantity minus the marginal cost, which is zero, all right? So therefore, this is the profit function. The first order condition means 100 minus 32Q1 minus 16Q2 equals zero. That means 100 minus 16Q2 divided by 32 is equal to Q1. Let's simplify this. This means Q1 equals 100 divided by 32. So you can divide it to 2. You have 50 divided by 16. You can again divide it by 2. 25, 25 divided by 8. All right. And minus 1 over 2 Q2. So that's the reaction function for firm 1. Because the cost functions are symmetric, I mean that both are zero, the reaction function must be 25 over 8 minus 1 over 2 Q1. All right, so therefore that means we have to solve them simultaneously. It means Q1 equals 25 over 8 minus 1 half. Whenever I see Q2, Q2 I'm going to put 25 over 8 minus 1 over 2 Q1. So, which is equal to 25 over 8 minus um, 25 divided by 16 plus 1 over 4 Q1. All right. And so, I have Q1 equals this. So, 3 over 4 Q1 equals uh, 25 over 16. 4 and 16 cancels out. I have 4 here. I have 1 here. 3 and 25 do not cancel, so that means Q1 equals 25 divided by 12. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have uh, integer numbers. So be it. Uh, that should also be equal to Q2 because the problem is symmetric. Therefore, Q1 and Q2 must be the same. All right. And so finally, the price is uh, 100. So the price equals 100 minus 16 times, 16 times uh, Q1 plus Q2. So it's uh, 50 divided by 12, all right? So I can make some simplifications. I can divide this by four. So I'm gonna have three here and four, four here. So this is 100 minus, um, this is 200 minus three. So therefore it's 100 divided by three. This is the price, okay? So that means the profit of firm one, by the way, has to be equal to profit of firm two, which is, there's no cost, right? So price, just the revenue. So 100 divided by three, which is the price, times the quantity, 25 divided by 12. 
So again, we can simplify this divided by four, divided by four. So the profit one equals profit two, which is equal to 625 divided by nine, whatever that number is. Sorry, it is not uh, integer. That's my bad. Um, but yep, yeah, this is the profit function. Okay. If they um, uh, compete in a Cronaut fashion. Well, what if they form uh, a, a cartel and act like monopoly? All right. What does that mean? Well, that means they are going to produce, um, you know, half is going to be, so they're going to fix I mean, they're going to choose their production simultaneously. I'm uh, not simultaneously, uh, cooperatively. So they, they say, oh, we're going to choose some quantity, Q. All right. And then you produce half of it. I produce half of it. That's the deal. All right. So that means the demand, I mean, the price will be 100 minus 16 times Q. All right. Because the cost is zero, the cost is still zero. Right. I mean, we can freely produce this product. So the monopoly, therefore, output and price is, well, the profit is 100 minus 16Q times Q, just the revenue. So therefore, the, the, the first order condition means, the first order condition means 100 minus 32Q equals zero. And so Q equals 100 divided by 32, or, you know, divided by two, we have 50, 16, 25 8 so it's 25 over 8 so this is the total production so if you remember in the Cournot case the total production q1 plus q2 was 25 oh, 50 divided by 12 all right and here the production is 25 over 8 and I think um, the, this one is bigger all right, so they, they, they produce more in comparison to the monopoly case. Well, what would happen to the price if this was the quantity? Well, simple, 100 minus 16 times 25 over 8. So this is 2, this is 50, so the price would be 50. So they would charge a clearly higher price. So 100 divided by 3 is lower than 50. Well, at the end, the profit would have been 50 times 25.8. Oh, this is the total output. So therefore, you know, divided by 2, divided by 2, this. So 125 divided by 4 would be total um, profit. Well, the how are they going to split? Remember, they are going to split the quantity. So you will produce 25 divided by 16. I will produce 25 divided by 16. So the total quantity is this. And therefore, we split the profit. And so the, 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 the profit for each firm is going to be um, hundred and, uh, 625 divided by 8. If we collude, this is how much profit each firm would make. If they don't collude, however, this is how much profit they're going to make. So clearly, uh, luckily, uh, we have the, the same number divided by 9 versus 8. So this is a higher profit than this. So both firms, both firms have incentive to collude and act like a monopolist. The reason is this, the competition means they both choose uh, high quantity, I mean, they choose quantity and independently. So at the end, the aggregate quantity is way higher than this. And therefore, the market clearing price is way lower than this. And hence, as a result of this, the profit is lower than the monopoly. Okay, so they have incentive to form monopoly or uh, cartel. But the thing is, if these firms are interacting with each other only once, all right? This this, this the, the, the collusion may not actually survive. And, and when I say that if they interact once, I mean, you know, we, we, we form a cartel, we produce, and then we sell, we receive the profit, and that's it. There is no future. 
all right? And there was no past, and so there's no future. So we just play this game once and for all. If this is the case, the firms will have actually incentive to cheat. How so? So let's think about firm one. So firm two, let's say, sticks to uh, this uh, collusion scheme, meaning firm two is going, no, I'm sorry, this is, so let's say firm two will actually obey the agreement and it's going to produce half of the pro, uh, sort of output, the monopoly output. As firm one, I was supposed to produce the other half. But let's say I don't produce that. I produce something else. All right? Some Q1. Well, question is, can I choose Q1 in such a way that I end up profit higher than 625 divided by 8? And even higher than, I mean, this is already higher than this, but it's even higher than this. Well, of course I can. How? Well, how can I find that profit? Uh, sorry, uh, the quantity. So I look at the, mono, uh, the firm one's problem. So the firm one's problem is the following. It's the profit, right? No cost, so just the revenue. The revenue is price times quantity. The price is 100 minus 16 times Q1 plus Q2. Well, let's suppose, again, as I said, let's say the firm two is going to be an obedient firm and it will produce the half of the monopolist output, but I'm cheating, all right? So we're not cheating at the same time. So let's suppose the other guy is a naive guy and I am the sort of uh, smart. And so I cheat, the other one sticks to the uh, agreement, all right? Then this would be my profit and the profit maximizing output level would be satisfying the first order conditions, which is 100, the derivative of this with respect to Q1 is 100 minus 32Q1 because it's going to be 16Q1 square, right? And then minus 16 times this times Q1 this, so it means the 16s will cancel out 25 equals zero. So therefore 75 divided by 32 equals Q1. Both are divisible. No, this is not divisible by three. This is not divisible by two. So that's it. So that would be Q1, okay? Well, the question is, if this is Q1, what would be the price? 100 minus 16 times, I'm producing 75 divided by 32. My opponent is producing 25 divided by 16. So that would have been the price. So here, uh, again, don't use a calculator as much as you can't. Um, so multiply this by two so that this becomes 50 divided by 32. Now I can add this up. So this is 125 divided by 32 times 16, remember. So um, the 16 and 32 cancels out. I have two here. So this is 125 divided by two. So this is 100 minus 125 divided by two. So it's going to be 200 minus 125. It means 75 divided by two. So that would have been the price. Well, what would be my profit? I am producing 75 divided by 32 units and the price is 75 divided by two. Oh boy, this is therefore, now I need a calculator. Okay, because at the end I need to compare this with this one. So here is the profit, 75 times 75 divided by 32 uh, divided by two, so it's 87, 88 roughly. And what about this one, 625 divided by eight is, this is roughly 78. Okay, all right, so what is the lesson? The lesson is the following. If in this specific example, we can definitely generalize this example to any demand curve and any cost function, all right? Here I chose the cost being zero 
it kind of simplifies the analysis and it also makes the analysis like, uh, yeah, it simplifies the analysis. So if these firms compete in a Cournot fashion, meaning they independently choose their quantities, if they do that, they're going to choose very high quantities overall. And because of this, the price will be lower, lower than the monopoly. So if they get together and act like monopolists, they can actually increase their prices by lowering the total output. So how do, we, how do they do that? They kind of write an agreement. They say, oh, you know what? Let's commit to Q units of output. So this is a commitment problem. So let's commit to that output. Um, 25 over 8. You produce half of it, I produce half of it. And so the total output will be the monopoly output because of this. So it, I mean, everyone will see that these two firms are producing. So they're going to assume that they are actually competing. But in fact, we're committed to a monopoly output. So we're going to produce less than um, uh, what we would normally produce if we didn't have any agreement. All right, so this is 25 over 12 is, well, let's just give a number to that. 25 divided by 12 is like 2.1 roughly. All right, so this is 2.1 units. But on the other hand, 25 divided by 8, the total is, this is 3.1 total. So, <clears throat> so each of us produces, uh, rather than 2.1 units, we produce each of us 3.1 divided by 2, approximately 1.5-ish. All right, so we, we commit to produce less, and as a result of this, the price will be higher. So this is the agreement we write. And that guarantees us a higher profit. All right, this is clearly higher than this. All right, however, if these two firms are not having a long-term relationship, well, one of the firms here, I just assumed firm one, has incentive to cheat. All right. So let's say the other firm is a naive firm and it's going to stick to that plan and it's going to produce exactly what they were uh, planning to produce. And the Q1, however, is not produce uh, the other half, but it's going to produce more than that. All right. So if we calculate this Q1, this is 75 divided by 32. It has to be more than 1.5. 75 divided by 32, this is, yes, 2.34 approximately, 2.34, all right? So although the firms were made an agreement to produce around 1.5, one firm will actually go ahead and produce more than that, okay? Well, why? Well, because the other firm is already producing very little to keep the price very high. So given that the other firm is doing it, it's producing much less. So I am actually going to produce even more than what we agreed. And so that's not going to reduce down the price way too low, like in the Cournot case. It's going to reduce down the price a little bit, but not too much. So because of this, I can actually guarantee myself higher profit than uh, if we actually go ahead and form a cartel, all right? So I'm going to cheat, therefore. Well, when is cartel or collusion is sustainable if these firms are not one-shot firms? Like, they actually have a, a long-lived agent. It's like they, 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 they compete with each other for a very long term. So if, if one of them cheats, then the other firm can actually punish that firm by, for example, um, uh, competing with this firm uh, for the rest of its life, all right? So it's like, so if the firms have the opportunity to write an agreement and put a clause and says, oh, if one of us cheats, the other will never uh, form a cartel for the rest of, um, you know, our life of operation. Well, so that's going to be enough of threat for the firms not to cheat. But if they do not have this long-term relationship, it's just one shot game, well, the forming a cartel and acting like monopolists may not be sustainable because one of the firms will have incentive to cheat. All right? 
<clears throat> I hope that was clear.